Good morning, everybody. I am going to hijack this uh, very important uh, technical love-in with a word for human imagination. Now, one great thing about having white hair and being of an age considerably greater than the average here is I get to be a grandfather. So I actually get to see my five-year-old granddaughter, Aurelia, sit there with her long, blonde, unruly hair, deep in conversation with her imaginary world of mythical beasts and adventurous rescues. And I'm reminded that her imagination is, is boundless. But the joy of this is somewhat tempered by the downbeat thought that the chances of her carrying this rich resource into her adulthood are minimal. Now, we are reminded in the 500th year of the death of Leonardo da Vinci that this doesn't actually have to be the case. I'm sure we're going to be told and retold many times during the course of this year how an unschooled individual rose to become the high priest of innovation, equipped with the relatively new technologies of, of the printing press, surrounded by the intellects of the fleeing Ottoman scholars, uh, liberated by inventions like uh, credit and insurance, and spurred on by enlightened, wealthy uh, patrons of the time. In other words, it's a city where ideas could flourish. Now, alas, I don't think that is going to be the lot of Aurelia, whatever choices her parents make about her education. She's more likely destined to grow up with, in the time between now and her adolescence, having been force-fed outdated educational materials and other masses of content of very dubious value. Any vestiges of that innate imagination that she had will encounter some very well-intended but stifling rules that have been laid down by generations of regulators and, and managers and, and legislators. And then every step she takes, she's going to have thrust upon her frameworks and key performance indicators and business plan requests that really are driven by this rational, reason, reductionist habit that we've developed as mankind over centuries to try to control and contain ideas rather than let them take flight. You know, what a waste. Um, you know, even I, as a doting grandfather, am I'm, I'm forced to concede that maybe Aurelia is not the only child with boundless imagination. In fact, Tim, how are you doing? <laughs> In fact, there are 350,000 other children that will be born today and 350,000 children that will be born every day. So imagine, imagine if we could find a way to give that, the next generation the the confidence, the capability, the capacity to be able to carry that imagination and use it not only in the, the, the innocence of their early days, but throughout their lives. You know, a generation that actually felt in control of its destiny, felt able to change the world, felt some relevance again that was robust even in the face of the incredibly fast changing context in which they're likely to leave, live. Just think what a difference that would make to their lives and to humanity as a whole. Now, I actually believe this, this new Florentine ambition can be made a reality, if we put it as the core mission of the development of technology. If we think of AI more as augmented imagination than some form of intelligence that requires humans to stoke its boilers, to force feed it with data on some journey to unexplored lands where we're just passengers. So I see a world in which we embrace the new educational paradigms of head, heart, and, and, the, uh, and, and soul, and uh, where it allows us to train young children to, to, to not only be curious, but to explore their own imagination and to to I turn ideas into reality. I mean, just thinking as of technology as a whole, training, training our machines not to control human imagination, but to uh, to make sure it becomes it creates a space and support 
for, for it to, the, these individuals to be able to do something. Technology that is actually a, uh, it's a constant companion. It's a, uh, an, a toolkit to allow us to, to turn ideas into reality. It is a, a navigator of insight, a risk, a risk um, a radar for us. So there are many ways that we can actually use this going forward. Now, human beings act according to what they see as possible. You know, with augmented imagination within their reach, anything becomes possible. The ability to, um, to solve some of the many issues, pressing issues of people and, and planet, or even to find new models for political leadership, for uh, organizational cultures, and for responsible capitalism. Look, you know, in the end, machines may take over. But let's make that a glorious homo deus moment that is actually seen as a natural evolution from a golden era of human imagination, rather than some lunging attempt to escape from a world that feels entrapped and untrusting. So, you know, power, re revolutions are born in declaration and delivered in language. And so the only thing I leave with you today is think about what we've heard today and say, do we think the language today has really been putting human beings in an extraordinary power of imagination at the heart of technology development? And if not, then help me in making that happen. Thank you.